Japan and Chile both looking to get their Rugby World Cup off on the right foot. And because of that, I think we're going to see a very exciting match between these two. My name is Mark. Let's talk rugby. Japan versus Chile. This is a Pool D game. It's at the start of Toulouse in Toulouse. It's on Sunday, the 10th of September, and kickoff is 12 BST. This is world number 14 versus world number 22. Chile at 22 are the lowest ranked team in this World Cup. Now, let's have a look at the two teams, starting with Japan. So, the front row, they got Keita Inagaki, then Atsushi, Sakate, and Jiwon Gu. So, pretty much a first choice front row there. Second row then, they got Jack Cornelson and Amato Fakatawa. Back row then, you got Michael Leach. You know, not as not as good as he was before, but still a decent player. We've got uh, Kanji Shimokawa at seven and Kazuki Himeno at eight. So Himeno, I think, is the one who's kind of taken over as the driver from Leach of that pack and of the team overall. Into the backs then, at nine, we've got uh, y- Yutaka Nagare. Ten is Riki Amatsuda. On the left wing then we have Jone Nakabula. Centers we have Yoto Nakamura and Dylan Riley. So, you know, uh, compared to the center partnership they had in 2019, I think, you know, this one doesn't have a patch on it. Then right wing then we have Kotaro Matsushima and at fullback we have Semisi Masirewa. On to the bench then we have Shota Hori or Horie or Craig Miller Asili Aovalu. So again, you know, um an okay bench, but I think the, the trend is like it's a dip from, from the twenty nineteen really. Then we have uh Warner Derns. Covering the second row, we got Shota Fuki, Fukui, we got uh, Naoto Saito, Tomoki Osada, and Lamano Lemiki. So, you know, it's it's kind of hard with this this Japanese team because, you know, I, I lived in Japan for a long time. My wife is Japanese. I want to see them do well, but, you know, they... they they haven't been inspiring since that last World Cup. And, you know, in fairness, a lot of it, you know, doesn't just lie at the feet of, you know, the, the players and the coaches. You know, I think they, they got a bad rap from the from World Rugby and the rugby world in general in terms of being made a Tier 1 nation, but not actually being put into a Tier 1 competition where they, they could develop and grow. I think that's that has shown, like, the, you know, they've been starved of tests, uh, COVID had a big impact on their ability to play games. The fact that, you know, the, the Sun Wolves got kicked out of Super Rugby as well. Just everything was kind of going, going against them. Uh, but, you know, so we have like a team who uh, kind of were a minnow who were on the rise and were causing upsets, like beating Ireland at the, you know, the, the last Rugby World Cup. And, you know, Previously as well, before that, beating South Africa, you know, showing that they're a coming nation and they're really exciting, but who are now kind of on the dip. And then you have Chile, who are a team who have been kind of outside this whole, um, you know, Rugby World Cup thing, who have the qualified and they're a team on the rise looking to make the kind of impression that we've seen Japan make in the past. So it's a big contrast between these two teams. But on to the Chile team then, we've got Javier Carrasco, Diego Escobar, and Matias Ditos as the front row. Second row then is Clemente Saavedra. Uh, Javier Eisman is second row. Then back row is Martin Sigren, uh, Raimundo Martinez, Alfonso Escobar. Then into the backs, now we have Marcelo uh, Torrelba. At 10, Rodrigo Fernandez, 
Left wing is Franco Velarde. Center is Matias Garofuli and Domingo uh, Saavedra. Right wing is Santiago Videla. And fullback is Inaki Ayarza. On the bench then they've got Augusto Bohm, Salvador Luz, Inaki Gorechaga, Pablo Huit, Santiago Pedrero, Ignacio Silva, Lucas Carvalho, Jose Ignacio Laren Laren Larenes. <laughs> Don't know why, but I can't pronounce his name properly. Laranas. Okay. So yeah, that's the Chile team. You know, I don't know too much about them other than maybe watching the odd like Squid Rugby video. Um I know that they're ex they're an exciting team. They did a great job in qualifying because generally, you know, from their neck of the woods, you're talking about um Argentina, uh Uruguay, USA, Canada as being the, the teams you, you expect to qualify for so for Chile to you know um to get to the rugby world cup ahead of some of those teams really already is a, a, you know a great um achievement from them these two teams they've never played before so we don't have a previous game to look back on in terms of how to think the game is going to go well you know Chile you know, uh, coming in here, they've absolutely nothing to fear. They're going to have a go at this Japan team. I think that's actually going to help Japan. I still think that, you know, this Japan team in terms of quality is nowhere near as good as 2019, but they can still build into their pool and into this World Cup and potentially get to a, you know, get to a quarterfinal. And having Chile first up, could be a blessing or it could be a curse for them, you know, depending on how the result goes. But I think Chile's style of play will suit Japan because in terms of counterattack, keeping the ball alive and just making the most of every, every opportunity, Japan are right up there with the best in the world. Again, the personnel may not be of the, you know, same quality as we've seen in previous uh, Japan sides, but that mentality is still there within the team to, you know, on turnover ball, to move the ball quickly, get to the space, and also going into contact to try offloads and, and keep the ball moving. So because of that, I think that, you know, we're going to have an exciting game. I think it's probably going to be, you know, looking at it on paper, you probably think, oh, you know, if I'm going to skip a game, it might be it might be this one among a few others, but I think this this is going to be one of the more exciting games in terms of not knowing who's going to win and both teams producing moments of magic throughout the weekend. But I think that Japan are going to come out with a win that they can build on for the rest of the pool.